We uh, Next is Darwin, the rest of the Northern Territory. Australia has six time zones, all, none of which seem to be related to anything else. I'm glad you're here. I know it's early in the morning in the United States, uh, or at least morning in the United States, and we will be here uh, all the way through 7 a.m. Eastern uh, time on New Year's Day, 4 a.m. Pacific time. Uh, we plan to have uh, a call to as many time zones as we can reach via Skype because we know that this is a global operation. Um, and uh, I'm just looking at, I'm looking at the map here and uh, miles to go before we, <laughs> before we sleep, I think. Happy New Year, everybody. There's Australia. We're getting, we're working our way through Australia. They're all going to die. And I'm glad to have everybody in the chat room. What are we, are we going to, is there any way, that we cannot make a 24-hour a podcast out of this. Is there any way we could distribute this for later uh, use? You know what we should do is do chunks. Like the Warhammer stuff is great, and I would love to make a little Warhammer special. And So we'll make it We'll make it available for you on the Twit specials. Oh, I was wrong about Dubai. It's only 6 p.m. And I don't know why somebody, I thought somebody in the chat room said Dubai. But, you know, as I look at the map, it's not even close. Yeah, we got a long way to go. We've just we've done the Philippines, China, Vladivostok, Yakutsk, Irkutsk, Kamchatka, the East Siberian Sea. Uh, coming up next, actually, uh, Shanghai. Uh, the Philippines will be uh, coming up. Manila, uh, big chunk of Russia. So we have quite a way to uh, to go. Oh, Padre uh, SJ is actually uh, in, uh, was in Vegas. I don't know if he's going to come in. He's going to stop by. Good. All right. Many of our hosts are coming by. Pardon me? Dan Patterson will come by. That's great. He's here? It's He's in New York. He's in New York. And Curtis Franklin. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> Dr. Koala, of course, that's what, I, these are all risk all I know is risk. Kamchatka Peninsula, Irkutsk, Yakutsk. It's from risk. That's Morning. my entire Happy knowledge. Hey, Dan, how are you? Happy New Year to you. <clears throat> oh, Leo can't hear you yet. Well, we're getting Dan and Curtis online. Let's go back to the Warhammer because we're playing Warhammer 40K, and uh, it is a it is a battle to the death between the Space Marines and those buggy things. It is, uh, I mean, if you thought Risk was elaborate, this is quite a game of conquest and territory. Can we get uh, Anthony or somebody over there with a camera so we could see a little bit more in detail uh, what's going on? There we go. There we go. We got Tony, Tony Wang running the, uh, the steady cam. And uh, I don't know if you can hear me now, Dan, but we are playing. Have you ever played any of these uh, Dungeons and Dragons or table games like this? This is called Warhammer 40K. And it's really qu quite amazing. You get the Warhammer kit. It's a model. You put the models together for the characters and then you paint them. These, uh, these characters, these models have been uh, painted by professionals. Frontline Gaming. And uh, uh, oh, look at this. Oh, look at this. The, uh, it's a battle between the space marines who have weapons and these bugs who have psychic powers. They spit and they can claw you like uh, nobody's business. And as you can see, there's 20 dice being thrown at once. <laughs> wow. Wow. Look at that. Good morning. Good morning, Dan. How are you? Is that Dan Patterson or is that Curtis Franklin? Dan still can't hear us, I guess. He's talking. So uh, about 20 minutes to New Year's Eve in Alice Springs. 
Again, all of my world geography learned from te television and games. Wait a minute. What are you doing out here, Jeff? Get back in there and work on that London Bridge. How, we're going to see how the tower... How is it coming? Let's check in with the Tower Bridge. We've got uh, Jeff Needles. We brought him out specially. He's our Lego builder to build a model of the Tower Bridge. And there we put it. We sent him back. We sent him back. What, you, Jeff, you've done nothing. What did you? What did you just stop and take a break? Did you go have a drink? You've done nothing. <clears throat> Get to work, Jeff. <laughs> what? He's got the bridge, and then it looks like he's building the base structure. Now you have to do this in order. How many pieces uh, is this, Jeff? No, you just stamp. You don't have to use a microphone. Just. <laughs> it's a lot. It's a lot. It's 15, it's 16 pieces. And uh, that, <laughs> wow, that's quite, that's quite something. That's going to be a beautiful bridge, the Tower Bridge. Jeff Needles. And then are you flying home with this like everything else? You're just going to take it home with you on the plane. He's going to put it up over the, uh, over the uh, overhead. Mano Kawari will be uh, celebrating New Year's in about 51 minutes. Alice Springs is coming up next. Uh, we just celebrated in Adelaide. It's very, Australia is very confusing. It's extremely confusing. Six time zones in Australia, but they're, they actually have time zones that are not only at the top of the hour, but at half and 45. There's an island, Eucla, <laughs> that will be celebrating New Year's in one hour and six minutes. Can you hear me now, Dan? Will you hear you? But, uh, happy New Year. I hope you are doing well. <laughs> Dan, Dan, you still can't hear us. Eh? Well, we can hear you. We're going to get that fixed. Antarctica is coming soon. And if anybody's in Antarctica and wants to call us, please, we'd love to hear from you. Logan5 says... Uh, that when that bridge is done, it'll look just like it did in the Sherlock Holmes movie. Wasn't that the, the climactic battle at the end of the Sherlock Holmes, first Sherlock Holmes movie? It was on the Tower Bridge. We have people coming from all over the world to join us uh, for this uh, celebration. Someone in the chat room says, Eucla's uh, plus 845 time zone is unofficial. The locals just made it up. And in fact, there are quite a few made-up time zones. This is one of the one of the things, one of the pitfalls we learned in uh, putting this show together, is that there are places that just made up the time zone. There's one uh, that wanted to be the first place to celebrate the year 2000, the first place to enter the millennium. So they just declared, "No, oh, we'll take it," <laughs> and they made up their own time zone. So the whole thing. At the end of this, I am sure that I will be one of the people who is lobbying hard for no more time zones. Every, everything should be in the same time and just live with it. Lunchtime will be at 4 a.m. It doesn't matter. Live with it. And I don't care. It doesn't have to be. It could be Greenwich Mean Time. I don't care. Just one time zone. That's it. Should we do coffee? Let's do coffee. We got to get the grinder. Is the grinder here or is it still... No, well, we brought it. Did you guys, uh, somebody went out in the car and got it. I brought it over. If it's, it's still in the car, if, if we didn't get it in. When you think about it, there really isn't anything to prevent people from just making up a time zone. No, there's no, there's no rule of law with time zones. Steve Gibson's saying, you can just make up. Yeah, of course. I mean, I guess somebody has to say, you know. I mean, there's no, like, what, I don't know. There's no governing, there's no governing body. body. Do you have to go to the, observe, the Greenwich Observatory and say, please, sir, may I have a time zone? <laughs> Please, sir. So here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. We have a KitchenAid. Now this is a the prescribed grinder, a burr grinder. Steve Gibson says uh, on number three. So has it been emptied of its prior? It has been emptied of its prior contents to the degree we were able to. Let's plug it in and um, and I will grind what's left. Oh, there should be another part, Chad. A little catch glass catch. We don't need that. We're gonna go right into the filter. Now, do you mind that we're going to use this special metal filter? This is a cone filter. This was a Kickstarter. Well, you can't see anything because the coffee grinder has taken over the entire space. But uh, this is a specially milled uh, extra fine. Now, you've probably seen those gold filters before, yeah? 
You, but we're going to go right into the cone, as it turned out. Um, but K O N E. This was a Kickstarter project I, I bought. Okay. So this is the coffee we're not going to use. <laughs> Thanks for bringing that out. But Steve has brought, and now along with the cone filter, I bought uh, this uh, special ceramic uh, drip pot that fits the cone filter. And you, you think this is acceptable? Well, Normally, Steve will use a paper filter, Melita. I use a paper filter, and I use. Let's a get uh, Steve's uh, this mic here. Can we put uh, Steve on uh, mic two, please? And uh, you pull up a chair, Steve. Make yourself to yeah. home. I, I don't know if you'll be. John will set you up. You're probably not on camera. But we'll, we'll figure out a way to get you. Steve, wait. get this out of here. Ah, yeah. We're going to do a little coffee making. It's clearly time. It's only 6 a.m. in Petaluma, by the way. I would normally be snoring loudly right now. I was so excited. Steve came over. We had a we had a little uh, cabernet. A little. Steve had Scott Wilkinson cabernet. came over. Had a lot of cabernet, <laughs> and uh, and uh, had a nice quiet evening. Yeah. And uh, the the plan was to get me drunk so I could fall so asleep at 7 a.m. Yes. So I go to bed, and I'm so excited. I'm lying with my eyes wide open. I did not sleep. Well, because you were planning everything. We're I was thinking. I was thinking. I was working the, through yeah. the logistics of all of this. Ah, yes, we need the kettle, the Breville kettle, to get it exactly the correct temperature. Now, we also need a power strip. water in there already. Well, I, gee, I would normally say put cold water in there, but I guess for today we can well, so, to speed. Okay, so the only glitch here is the amount of coffee to water. Because so that was why I was hoping we would have the same brewer that I use. Only well, uh, but I know how we can. Do we need a cup that. measure? Will that? No, I've got I, I've got some stuff in the car that I'll go I'll go around right. right and get. So so Steve, as probably all of you know, uh, his drug of choice is caffeine. Large quantities. When it's not Cabernet, <laughs> it's but you can't do that in, during the day, of course, <laughs> as we found out yesterday. Holy cow! Where, did you get home safe and sound? Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I realized that after I let you out the door that uh, we'd had we consumed a, a considerable amount of of cabernet. Yeah, yeah, exactly. We opened a bottle of a 1990 uh, <coughs> Dunn uh, Howell Ridge. Uh, that's a Santa Cruz cab, quite a good one. Although this bottle had not been well preserved, I think, and uh, was a little uh, thin, as you said. Right. And then we went to the Silver Oak, which was very which nice. was quite nice. Yeah, quite nice. Still had quite a bit of fruit left. So. So the all right now we can plug in the here. the point of my approach to coffee, which is different than than others. Of course, because why would you do it like everybody else? Well, well you do it scientifically. Well, okay. You, so the goal is not to make a single cup. Yeah. Because that's just if you're going to drink ten during the day. Well, in fact, we talked because I said, don't you like the AeroPress? This is what we all agree is the the perfect way to extract coffee, but there is a problem. Well, yeah, it's that it makes one cup, cup at a time. <laughs> and now, but you can't also you also can't make, for example, twenty at a time because you can't drink it that fast. And it do, the coffee does oxidize, and so uh, this is an important point that I did not know until Steve explained. But when coffee is exposed to the air, the brewed coffee is exposed to the air, it immediately starts turning. Right, and you 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 see that vividly in espresso. Because it, when, for example, if, if you pull an espresso shot, it comes out sort of chocolate brown, and just like sitting there looking at it over the course of 30 seconds, it immediately starts turning black. So, for example, when I've got my... That's because it's oxidizing. It's actually exactly. combining with oxygen. It, it, it's that fast. And yeah. so when I do my six-shot latte here, what I, what I make um, Starbucks do is I make them steam the milk first and then put the shots directly into the milk. The milk. Because that protects them. Seals it off from the oxygen. Exactly. Then yeah. And then you end up with like a really nice tasting latte. But... You know, no, they, they never want to do it that way. Now, I'm going to make a loud noise here because what I'm going to do is I'm going to get what remains of yes, the yes, yes, yes. prior beans. This is Godfather's Roar. This is a a, uh, a, a local uh, coffee roaster, the Petaluma Coffee Company, and they do an espresso bean, the Godfather's Roar, that is over-roasted. It's extra dark. Are we getting, are we getting it all? Oh, I don't see any beans still in there. Let me just put my hand in. Ah! No, tell you what, I'll tell you what, we could probably unscrew this. And uh, I think this unscrews. Yeah, it does. Because I have exactly, I mean, this is the grinder I use that's, at home. That's why we're, that's, we're doing it. That's my grinder. This is a good uh, KitchenAid burr grinder. It's not actually uh, what I use. Coffee, Mr. Coffee Geek uh, told me to get a Baratza. 
which I did, and it's much, much more expensive. Well, and see, the reason I use this is that I never use the reservoir. Um, I'll take the beans out of a vacuum storage and put exactly the number of beans I want to brew. See how they're all stuck around yeah. there? I mean, they're wonderfully greasy, which is- Oh, look at that. Look at that oil. Oh, yeah, yeah. Look at that oil. A ton of oil. <laughs> that's the Godfather's Roar right there. That's an oily, oily- Well, that's brilliant. Bean. Well, let's see if it, it may be brilliant or may not. I think maybe we need a, a, a minion to... Uh... A minion! Burke? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Burke! No, I think it's coming out. I mean, we don't... I mean, now... We can't, okay, have, so any, when we I, ha can't have any alien beans No, not beans even one there. alien no, bean? No, no, no. Because when I was, uh, when I was at wine tasting... I, I started to rinse the glass, and the guy looked up in horror. He said, absolutely not. You'll change the pH of the glass. You must not do that. Just pour the new wine in. Oh, would you unplug that? I don't want to stick yeah, yeah, my yeah, finger yeah. in the burr. Yeah. yeah. That, but, would uh, not, that, would, that would shorten the day. It would not. Well, we don't. We're trying to avoid bleeding here. How's the Warhammer going? Don't stop. Oh, we've got Dan Patterson. Dan, can you hear me now? Hey, Leo. How oh, are you? Happy I'm so sorry. Year. Happy New Year, Dan. <laughs> Happy New Year to you as well. And Steve is absolutely correct. As somebody who was trained to make coffee years ago, uh, that that oxidation is so very important with your espresso. You're kidding. Now, where oh, were so you? Very important. Six where, seconds. Where did you study, Dan? I, I went to the fine school of uh, Starbucks, Six Key Standards, in 1996. No kidding. Iowa. I, yeah. I, I myself was trained at Cafe Trieste in San Francisco. Oh, they're just as classy. Just oh, as classy. Oh, absolutely. And the, the lady didn't speak any English, so I don't think she knew the word oxidation. <laughs> but uh, but hearing, hearing Steve say this this morning is very reassuring. I'm I, glad that... Uh, I'm impressed that, that, that in fact, they, they do teach this at Starbucks U. Well, they did. They did. 15, 15 years ago. Apparently, the baristas didn't know. Yeah. Was, was this in, must have been in Seattle. This must have been the early days of Starbucks. No, this was in the uh, the classy town of Cedar Rapids, Iowa, and then again in Petaluma, actually. <laughs> what? Wait a minute. Yeah. Wait a minute. Dan Patterson, you were a barista in Petaluma, California? Uh, I lived in Sebastopol for years. I didn't know that. I lived right up the street from you. I worked uh, at uh, the bookstores and then for the O'Reilly, and uh, this I was a didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, this was uh, before tech was cool. Oh, you were in tech. I was in tech because I wasn't cool. I'm still not cool. But Dan, uh, Dan, of course, uh, then went to work for, uh, was it CBS Radio? No, I was at ABC, ABC. News for a number of years. I was at the UN for five years. Wait a minute, um, what did you do at the UN? Uh, I covered the UN for five years. Wow. I was a technology reporter, and uh, uh, in fact, we we're <laughs> preparing to go back to. I was in Darfur, Southern Sudan, and uh, or what is now Southern Sudan, and we're preparing to go back. In fact, to train, we're using a lot of. Uh, it's great that you have uh, uh, Mr. Gibson on this morning because we're using many of his tactics. We're training journalists on encryption and PGP in Ethiopia who are coming from. That's Khartoum. fabulous. That's However, fabulous. However, we're a little terrified this morning because it looks like the peace talks, as you. You know, I was in what is now southern Sudan. It was not at the time. It was uh, breaking away. It was uh, uh, a rebel state at the time. But uh, we're training some of the same journalists now in Ethiopia. But it looks as though uh, the peace talks from the, uh, the the violence that's broken out in the last two weeks in southern Sudan is the peace talks will occur in uh, Ethiopia. So so that may put a hamper on PGP south of the uh, equator. So Dan, after uh, after he boldly left ABC, uh, kind of went out on his own, was using tools like Twitter and Storify to uh, cover Occupy Wall Street. Uh, actually, you were still at ABC when you started doing that, but uh, then went full time on that, and uh, and now uh, works out of uh, the uh, the Squarespace Studios. Am I right? Well, some all, in fact. So uh, some all I, with Dane yeah, Atkinson, yeah. yeah. Yeah, much like uh, Jessica Lesson is doing now, though less financially successful. I ran a, <laughs> a failed successful company, but, you know, did many you have a paywall? Um, I, in fact, did not have a paywall, See? but I did do what's called native advertising very ah. early. Oh, so, OK. Um, but so, that, OK, so, so who's to, under whose auspices have you been going to Darfur? So now I will be going with a uh, prior is with a small company called the Talk Radio News Service, which is much like a wire service for a talk radio. It's a oh, B2B awesome. company. But uh, now I will be going back uh, with a small company called Small World News that is a not for profit. This is not, you know, we, we care, we could care less about, uh, they're not my employer. In fact, I have some cool employment stuff coming up, Good. but they are a not for profit organization that has a long pedigree of creating content. Uh, you know, they did the Alive and Bad 
Baghdad podcast back before, you know, only Adam Curry and wow. uh, you know, wow. five other people do podcasting. So wow. uh, they have a long pedigree of training and have a uh, uh, not-for-profit status that is uh, uh, fairly well established. Um, so many of the protocols, they're bringing me in because, you know, I know much of what I know about security encryption in large part because of listening to Mr. Gibson. But uh, so Steve, uh, I don't know if you heard that you were out getting coffee, but... Um uh, Dan Patterson is one of the things he's doing is teaching uh, journalists, particularly in South Sudan and Darfur, uh, how to use encryption and other technologies uh. to protect themselves as they cover these war torn regions. Right, because they, cause they exactly. need the, the security yep. of not having their their stuff intercepted. Yeah. Yeah. E exactly. So Steve TNO is huge. Uh, we are bringing uh, uh, journalists from Khartoum to. Uh, uh, there are a few countries that we want to remain, you know, fairly discreet about, but we can say that we'll be in Egypt, Jordan, and Ethiopia. Wow. Or those Isn't looks that like great? Yeah. Is that through yeah. Small World? Is that through Small World, or is that? Yeah, I mean the the credentialing and and much of the access is, um, and and they are. You know, much like we like to work collegially with old friends. So, again, they're not my employers, although we, you know, I'm being brought in because specifically because encryption is so I, I mean, the number one tech story. I know this is not a political show and I'm very nonpartisan, but the number one tech story of not just this past year. But uh, but I think I really do believe in my lifetime is this NSA story, yeah. particularly what we learn about the the arrangements between RSA and NSA. Hmm. I, I Wait. Know that this is you not mean the NIST, the NIST stuff, or is this something new? No, the stuff, the, 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 as we found out, you know, the, this financial agreement that there may have been $10 million. RSA paid took and, $10 million bribe in order, in order let's to. Say, let's say allegedly so we don't get sued yet. <laughs> but, uh, you know. I mean, right, right. So that stuff is actually yes. very, it's <laughs> not sexy. It's not a front end story, I but understand, it's a but huge it affects story. every single yeah. person on this planet. Huge story. Remember that, on, remember that on the podcast, one of the things we said was, that random number generator is the last yes. choice anyone yes. would That's pick. That's the NIST uh, random number generator, yes. yeah. The um, the the one that NSA wrote for the National Institute of Standards and Technology. <laughs> well, there there were four that were in the in RSA's Be Safe Security Kit. Right. And the default was the worst of the four. It was slowest and no one knew uh, no one understood why that would have been the default. And it turns out what we found in the last couple of weeks is that that the NSA paid RSA wow. ten million dollars, yeah, in order to choose I'm that very as the as the default. And I'm very yeah. disappointed to hear that. Yeah, boy. But it's, enough enough of that, <laughs> right? Because we we according to Bob, we have a new encryption <laughs> standard. It's C A H ten N four O two, aka caffeine, <laughs> and uh, it's appropriate that we should have a trained barista sitting here so dan i hope you will weigh in on the uh, what is about to happen here but dan has already confirmed the issue of coffee oxidation <laughs> yes now you spoke steve about the fact that this is far from optimal well no it's it's optimal for my goal okay which is I, so I, even though we don't have the proper stuff well and for example i don't need sherpas coming down from ethiopia Wait a minute, in, this is the bean you're going to give me as a Starbucks espresso? Yes, and that's my point, <laughs> is that this is part of what makes this practical. What, I think if we can pull this off correctly, I mean, if I can recreate the formula I have at home, it'll be the best tasting cup of coffee you've had. We and, need mugs. Well, um, so this is... Now, um, uh, uh, plug that in, because so, it's not plugged in yet. In okay, fact, so, so part of the problem is we need the right amount of water. I brought... What, we have a graduate. Can we have some graduated cylinders? <laughs> Karsten, Karsten, bring the graduates. I okay. brought the oh, exact... Oh, well, you have a cup measure. I brought the... Well, no, no, this is exactly the same size I use at home. That's the, that's the ground so I was gonna, I want okay. My goal has been to reproduce what I do every morning here right. so, so that you can taste exactly the same thing that I taste. So Dan, as you know, as a listener to Security Now, and everybody at home knows, uh, Steve is a bit of a caffeine fanatic. He invented, patented the Quinty <laughs> Venti Latte. No, no, six. Well, that, I, that, I'm, oh, I'm, oh, I'm oh. giving the history. Okay. But that turned out not to be sufficient because that, apparently he's developing a tolerance. He is now the, the inventor of the Sexty Venti Latte, which is six shots in a Venti. 
Dan, has anybody ever <laughs> asked you when you were working at Starbucks? Did anybody ever ask you for a six-shot venti latte? Maybe just Steve. That's uh, <laughs> okay, a so lot of guts. There. That's crazy but, talk. Now I got to point out though, am I wrong? And you tell me, Dan. Brewed coffee has more caffeine than an espresso, a Starbucks espresso. Espresso, yes, correct. actually, right. the the darker you roast the bean, the lower the caffeine content. And the espresso brewing method also does not extract the maximum amount of caffeine from a bean. Um, I think well, a drip a drip will do the, a better the, job. The, the super fine grind yeah. allows the water to reach the um, uh, more of the oils right. in the bean. Now, see, what I do is I take the, the, the dark roasted espresso bean, but I grind it for drip. It's my impression. So it's that, a drip grind. And, and I don't want to besmirch your, your former employer, Dan, but that Starbucks overgrinds, <laughs> it's, overgrinds its coffee in order to get more well, people, bang for the buck. Pe pe people also talk about how awful Starbucks coffee is. That, that I it's, like it, but I but some con many connoisseurs say it's just not good. Right. And right. so I don't know. Okay. Oh, cool. Oh, People well, I'm going to use same my... thing about ABC News. <laughs> <laughs> Terrible coffee. Oh, my God. We're ready now. We're ready. I've got my Union Jack coffee mug to celebrate here. Now, I've... is this Pyrex? I don't want to... By the way, we are Are we coming up on a time zone because I see... We've got half an hour. We don't have anybody. Right. Well, no. See, Steve? This is another lesson in geography that I've learned, <laughs> is that there's time zones all over the damn place. You can't say at the top of the hour. There's probably one... In two minutes. Okay. Ulan Bator, ladies and gentlemen. But we've got no one in Mongolia. So we're just going to skip right over it as if it never happened. Um, so, all right. So, so this has gotten kind of cold. We you, we've got that heat. Yeah, heat yeah. Now, now, by the way, this is a Breville uh, uh, electric kettle that does allow us to set the temperature. So you, you've you decided, you've elected, in a, in a kind of a shocking uh, display here, to go with 212 degrees, the actual full <laughs> boiling. I have been told many times that, in fact, it is not the ideal temperature for brewing coffee that you don't want to go that hot. But you, you say boil the water. Well, I should have sent up one of my proper <laughs> uh, drip brewers. I thought you had it. That's what, so, so that was the problem because I, I knew you had the grinder. The Zoji Rushi. The Zoji Rushi. I do not have the Zoji Rushi. Because that's five cups. And so that's the perfect compromise because it's not one cup, which is too few. And it's not ten cups, which is too many. Because the problem is, if you make ten cups and you just drink at a, even at a high rate of consumption, yeah, the coffee will oxidize. Here's a little trivia from Web fifty two fifty eight. Starbucks used to have a five shot venti coffee drink called the Mocha Valencia. <laughs> All right, in ten, in fifteen seconds, it will be uh, twenty fourteen in the Northern Territory, but like the rest of Australia, of Australia. we're going to ignore that. Uh, but <laughs> Dallas, uh, Darwin and Alice Springs, or as I call it, Dallas Springs, uh, will celebrate in four, three, two, one. Happy New Year, Darwin! That's enough. Okay, moving on. <laughs> no, no, really, we, that's enough. Uh, okay, so we are missing, but we have graduated cylinders. You don't have that at home. Yeah, um, okay, so... Oh, no, what happened? The balloons popped? Oh, my God, the humanity. <laughs> oh, right. There they are. There they are. The balloon drop is going back up. <laughs> Getting reset. Happy New Year, Northern Territory. <laughs> Raise the ball. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so the, so okay, so the other problem is using the right amount of water through the perfectly ground and formulated and measured beans in order to produce the correct result. Right. So those are the what th I know. Those, these are the, th the three factors you control are the grind, the amount of water, the temperature of the water. Yes. Um, what I know is, because I use and this And if every you're day, doing an espresso, the pressure that you're applying. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. Um, and in fact, that's one of the things that Starbucks is supposed to do is to calibrate the length of time that it takes to extract a right. single shot of espresso. Now, we have a clover, uh, Starbucks with a clover here. Oh, I thought you meant here in the building. No, we don't have a clover <laughs> in the building. But uh, that that presumably, that is a little bit more of a uh, gourmet brew. Yeah. yeah. But again, one cup at a time. Right. And so... And so, it takes a damn long time to make that one cup. Yes, it does. And it, and it produces a mess at the yeah. same time, <laughs> yeah. too. It's, yeah. so, so, so here in my little alchemy corner, the, the goal is to produce a fabulous cup of coffee with some trade-offs. I mean, yes, I'm just using uh, the espresso beans from Starbucks, but they end up tasting fabulous if they're brewed correctly. So, 
So that's good to know. I mean, I don't think that Starbucks beans are particularly well, bad. I'm I hoping think they just to convince you. Them. I'm all hoping right, to right. convince you, you know, with your taste buds. Yeah. If we can, you know. Did you know that Starbucks has added an average of two stores a day since Dan Patterson worked there? <laughs> 1987, Starbucks wow. has added two stores a day. And the highest concentration of uh, Starbucks stores, any guess? Santa Fe Springs, California, 560 Starbucks within 25 miles. Why there? I don't know. So did that turn off by itself? Yes, it does. When it gets to the right time. Oh, press so, the second so, button in. That's the, that that's the, yeah, that's the hold. So now press the, 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 the far Ooh, right button. I like this. Oh, I know. This is what you want. <laughs> this is very accurate here. We're going to get the plug out of the way so that Anthony can see what's going on. Ah. But, but, yeah, now press the, this is the Breville. Breville uh, is an Australian company that makes, I believe, very, very good. So that, is, they make my espresso uh, machine. So is it going to tell us when it's at the right press temperature? Press the far right one, and it'll, uh, I think one? it is at the right temperature, but, yeah. So now what you're saying is Ooh. get it to 212 and hold it there. Perfect. So as soon as it beeps at us, we have exactly 212 degrees. Okay, now, so what I know is, because I do this every day, yeah. this, is, this is the proper amount of water okay because i i fill up a little short of this and i have a little overage which i ooh, listen to that oh yeah it's that's boring. great so, so i have a put little that in the graduated cylinder so we can see exactly how many milliliters this <laughs> may be a mess <laughs> we have bagels with lox capers and cream cheese my favorite breakfast i, I think once we've brewed the coffee we should have it so ladies and gentlemen <laughs> It's a ridiculously large amount that will not fit into the graduated cylinder Barely somewhere did. north of 500 milliliters. I'm just worried this milliliters. is not Pyrex. Is this safe for, for yes, temperature? Yes, it's, it's, uh, it's a chemical a chemistry lab grade. It was sent to us uh, by nice. Mark Pelletier, who was the host of our Futures in Biotech. Yeah. Uh, there, are, there are genetically modified organisms in that uh, beaker. So there you go. Put it over there. <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> so it's somewhat more. Uh, I would estimate... That is maybe 600 milliliters. We have some scissors somewhere. Or 0.6 liters. So that's a significant size uh, mug. Who knew that? Now, we do still have some alien beans, but I think we've done everything mm, we can to get them I out think, of there. Well, you know, well, let's grind they'll, a little more. They'll let's be grind okay. a little more. And just, well, I was uh, thinking we, we might flush it with some of the flush proper it. beans first. Flush it. That's in, order, in order to clean You're it out. You're going to need to plug this in as well. Cause we've, ah, we've, yes. We've just, uh, Thank you. All right. This is a, all this for a cup of coffee. <clears throat> the next uh, time zone is, uh, I believe, now 25 minutes uh, away uh, on our New Year map. And it will be... Uh... Oh. oh, fabulous. No, Did you just pick these up? Mm. That's another important factor, and I think Dan Patterson will confirm, that the freshness of the bean <laughs> is very important. But more than just the freshness of the roasting... But in fact, the freshness of the bean prior to roasting, I have seen many a coffee shop with a with a bag, a burlap sack sitting outside uh, on this front stoop for days as that bean gets moldy and old. Where do, do we not bring the collector? Well, we had the collector. There oh, we there go. There it is. All right. Let's just, we're going to flush, we're gonna flush the grinder with, with the proper bean. <laughs> Stand back. It's a rather loud uh, grinder. And at home, I actually have a foam pad. Oh, yes. That Very this sits important. on because I need to be able to shake it in order to get all the beans through. <laughs> Dan Patterson and, and we're on is three in our now, chat right? room. He's changed his uh, handle to Mr. Snark, in case you'd like to chat with him. I did. <laughs> you did or you didn't? No, no. Oh, that's, that's uh, some, no it's an room. imposter. It's an imposter. An imposter. Damn them. However, I Damn think them. you would quickly embrace the, the title. All right, Steve is currently <laughs> flushing. Yeah, the next time zone is Tokyo, so if we have anybody listening in Tokyo, uh, we use 24 minutes to New Year's Eve in Tokyo, and we will talk to somebody in Tokyo, and we'll have some fireworks, I bet, there, too. What? All right. What? Tokyo. Oh. We're in Tokyo. 25 minutes over Tokyo. How's the Warhammer going? <clears throat> oh. Have the Zerg won yet? They're starting to kind of take over here. Yeah. All right. Okay, that's hot. That's hotter than it's ever been. So how do I turn this? Okay, Hot, hotter than it's ever been. That's that's, that's the name of this show. <laughs> um, okay, so now we want to get, get rid we're, of we're this. getting ready. Oh no, you no, don't need that. That's we don't excess. need that. And and the flushing was operation was successful. Successful flush. So this we do. This is a quarter cup, <laughs> and we do it exactly level. 
just like that. <laughs> Bill Hicks says, this looks like some sort of strange coffee worship going on here. Welcome okay. to the altar of fine caffeine. So what? that was one cup. That was a quarter cup. Quarter cup exact, of ah. a Starbucks... Just of plain espresso st standard, roast. Standard, and that's part of why this is practical. Nothing special. You don't have to, like, pre-order right. this and have the donkeys bring it down. It's just, like, right at your corner Starbucks. Juan Valdez has delivered this. Exactly. All right, now, so now we're going to Okay, go, and again, i got to say, this is that special metal cone filter, not what's not Steve-approved. I use order. brown Melita paper on my Zoratsu or whatever. Zoji Rushi. <laughs> <laughs> yes. yes, and we're set to three. That's the proper grind. Okay. And the reason I chose this yes. is that is that when this comes out of its vacuum storage, because I also pump the air out of the beans, I transfer or, the bag in, into vacuum. Again, oxygen the enemy. Yeah, exactly. And so, very much like Cabernet. Um, so <laughs> <laughs> this is all related. Yes. So, um, so then I take exactly the beans I want. The reason I chose this grinder is that they fall straight through from exactly the amount you measured into the filter. No you, middle You never man. use this reservoir for storage. God, because they just get stale. They, exactly. Yeah. All right, so we are now grinding a number three grind of the Starbucks espresso bean into the finely milled cone, K-O-N-E, metal filter basket. Okay. Now, do you want to heat up the... And that's, uh, that looks exactly right. So okay. that's a drip. So th Steve that's will verify a course, that is... a coarse drip. It's a very coarse grind. It's a very coarse grind. And so what that means is it's not going to be bitter because you're not going to extract deep into the, the bean. You're not going to get the bitter oils that you normally do get with an espresso grind, which is a mu almost talcum powdery grind. Can you get that uh, shot uh, there, uh, John, of the bean? So we want everybody to see... This is what they're looking for. Here, I'll use a British uh, pencil to, to stir it <laughs> so they can just get a sense of what that looks like in there. It looks like, uh, frankly, a, uh, the kind of soil I use to pot my plants. All right. So it's, that's, that is very coarse. Number three yes. is very coarse. I mean, big chunks. All right. Now, do you want to heat up the pot with some hot water or anything? Or? Uh, I think we'll, but we want it to be dropped down to drinkable temperature quickly. So, All right. And so I did buy it. that phase change mug that Steve was talking about on Kickstarter. Yeah, uh, we're looking on, forward to getting those. Way. Yeah. All right. Okay, so, so, so I'm using 212 this in, degree. I'm using this in order to. Well, that's gonna be gauge. hotter than a. Yeah, it is gonna be hot. Using Zerg uh, gauge, gun after. That's about. So that's the right amount of water for right. this. Again, for, approximately 600 milliliters for one. What was it? One quarter cup of bean. Well, I'm not really able to drip it in there. Um, oh, sure you well, are. Go ahead, just just let it. It's you know those those are specially milled holes, <laughs> finer than typical metal. Okay, you're gonna need an empty cup somewhere. Baskets. I have I have a variety of empty cups. Uh, are you making just one cup? No, we make five here. All right. Well, I also have my fine British cup. But you only need one. One one will do. You well, have one over there. We'll split what we get. Uh, well, you, Who else wants some? We'll see how much we get. I think yeah. we should uh, give some to the audience. I, I think, so. Well, and we don't have to do this only <clears throat> once, Leo. The British are it's known be a long day. for their, their uh, cuisine, cuisine and their, their excellent uh, taste. In <laughs> Did you just flip me off, sir? And, <laughs> and their excellent taste in coffee. I commend this live studio audience of four. Yes, four people. Intrepid. Who, intrepid. And Taylor, I included you. You're one of the four who who showed up to to watch this happen live. Listen, listen Ooh, to the drip. Sounds good. Listen to the dripping of the falling rain. Oh, That's quite good. What a lovely sound. It does sound good. This may work, Leo. I mean, no, I'm telling you, despite all of our, I'm telling you, are off the re this the is reservation. this cone filter is better than you think, and I did sanitize it for your protection earlier today. <laughs> <laughs> it's just too bad that only nine people are watching this. Actually, you know, I think we have almost a thousand people no, in the chat room. No kidding, great. Yeah, let me let me check here. 1290 wow. people in the chat room. Wow. Yeah, that's a good that's a good lead. Well, we have a strong following crowd. in Australia. They're and all awake. Midnight for them. We will be going to Tokyo in 19 minutes. 
to celebrate. Everybody in the chat room waving to you, including Simon Zarafa, the most quoted man. Oh, on no kidding. Security now. <laughs> he's in he's in Wales. In Wales? Yeah. Wow. Like Noah. Well, Simon earns his quoting. I mean, he is a he is a He's a good man. You're like no one I've known. He's a good tweeter. Well, we will ask Steve if this measures up to what he makes at home with his brown paper Melita filter. Yeah, I think that's the biggest thing. See, and at home, it's a far less manual process. It's yeah, this is grind the beans. Yeah, you can do this in seconds, not minutes. Turn the pot on, and I go away for about five minutes, and then it's it's ready to go. Dan Patterson, where are you going and next? Home, I guess. <laughs> you were on. You were on. Uh, hello, Anthony. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> now, actually, we, we had a little debate. Over there? This is another cup of coffee. Oh, you're going to get confused, Leo. No, no. You I'll, need I'm to, gonna, like, I need you, a palate cleanser. You need, exactly. I was <laughs> just going to say. That's right. Uh, mm, we, no, no. We, so they're saying I should wash the Chinese uh, residue out of this cup, but I, 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 I think a mere rinse would be sufficient. So I'm just going to rinse this. Well, maybe I'll put it. This is a. New, I think you want to put it in a ceramic. fresh cup. Yeah, yeah. We'll put it in ceramic. Well, so I'm going to save this though because I will be using this. Okay, there's the last. Of the, the water birds in. love the Brits. Is there anything else you would? like to tell us about this concoction merely that you make it every day how many cups a day do you consume if i do my sometimes i'll go to starbucks early and get my initial six shots of espresso in the latte in which case that normally wires me enough that i'm just not feeling like any more coffee for at least a few hours and that you will do one of those before each security now uh, no, on security now days, I don't leave the house. I get up and I start working <laughs> to put me, the po- to me put, too to put the podcast together. Wow! But so you make your own. Oh, oh, oh! What's going on? Let's check out the uh, the battle is uh, is raging over in the Warcraft table. Those Space Marines look like they're doing very very well. I'm a I'm a little concerned. The uh, oh, there's the buggers. Those little what do you call those bugs? Tiernan. Tiernan. The Tiernan, are, how are you doing over there, Mr. Tiernan? Um, they're doing okay. I've killed his um, little Uber unit, but yeah, we've uh, we've taken a lot of losses on both sides. It looks like it. Quite a few gone. Quite a few gone. And it is hand-to-hand combat now with the Tiernan and the Space Marines. And in the back there, that looks like a scary mofo. And who's hiding behind that tree? Uh, I'm. That's my leader. I'm guessing it's not Santa Claus. <laughs> Tell me what you think. Oh, all right. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we'll come back here because... I think it's a little weak. You feel it's weak? I think it's a little weak, but you'll you'll get a sense for just how smooth it is. Uh, you know, I have to say the aroma is fine. Uh, very... Uh, I would say it's um, a kind of a back stare mixed with uh, cedar shavings. Let me... Um, let me... Please drink let it. Me just, let me just take a... It's oxidizing as we speak, so I better... <laughs> Oh my God! It is smooth. Wow, there's it's very smooth. Now normally I douse my coffee with cream and sugar. I've this had is, people say this is coffee when I've when I've had them try. That's it. quite that's quite good. Now you're saying it's a little weak. It's a little weak. I I would normally yeah because we we were you know seat of the pants here. <sighs> no, that's actually very good. <laughs> I confess. Uh, yeah, I I, you know. With this, I mean, you know, no, that's with, very good. With with very simple raw materials, <sighs> it's just I drink that. Really, I would drink that really every morning. Drinkable. You know, it's nice. It's very fresh, which I like. I yes, mean, you know, there's yes. no well, and again, you can find the bean anywhere, <sighs> and when when you put it together, you've got enough coffee to last for a while. So let let me give you a parts list, folks, because uh, one of the things that we don't have is something Steve told us about on Security Now. And this was this a Kickstarter, the Zoji Rushi? No, no, no. Uh, I found it on Amazon. And w- what I like about it is it's the right size. It's five cups, so it's not ten. And it uses the, the Melita filter, so it, it, um, it drips right through the filter into the pot. And then I transfer it to 
this guy. Is this it? Is there's the, there's Zuto. That's the one. The Zuto coffee maker. Can you show yep. my screen, uh, uh, John, or I'm whoever's on TV? I'm you have that cup of coffee. Oh, please. <laughs> Sh share with me. Share with me. Ah. So um, uh, it's a removable water tank and water filter. Lasts up to two years in a normal Ooh. use. Brews up to five cups of coffee. And how much was this on, uh, on Amazon? Oh, so you recommend this. You do use Melita paper filters with it. The brown paper. The brown. You, you don't want you don't the, want the bleached. bleached. No, of course not. Um, and uh, and you will brew a full pot. I do. Yes, because actually a little more than five. It because you can fill it past the five mark in the little tank in the back. Um, this has 0.675 liter capacity. So we I was estimating about 600 uh, milliliters. So right. That's about right. Right. Where um, are we here? This is yeah, five. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's so about six hundred milliliters. About exactly yeah. right. Yeah, and uh, all right, and so and the grinder uh, that we're using is a KitchenAid, and you like this. Well, again, because it's a it's a fall through. It falls. You you, you grind the beans. Ooh, that came up fast. That's nice. Oh yeah, the, the you, uh, you, you, I'll, you, I'll give you, a, you. You grind exactly what you're going to consume, so that because the other problem again is oxidation. If this sits here. I mean, the, the, you know, the, the, these are already disqualified. Right. This is the KitchenAid ProLine grinder. This is not an inexpensive grinder. It's over $100, I think. Yeah, it's, and, and it's a Berg grind, and that's the other thing. You need a Berg grind. You need two wheels that are grinding in opposition so, so you get a, a uniform grain size right. out of the other end, not one of these things that just fractures the beans with, with the blade spinning around in the air. This actually is not it. Let me see if I can find... Uh, or maybe it's just a different color. Yeah, it is. It's just a different color. KitchenAid Pro Line. Yeah. Yeah, the Pro Line. Bird, yeah, but you coffee want black. Milk. I mean, yeah. look at us. Yeah. Black. Two hundred dollars. Not an inexpensive grinder, but no. uh, frankly, uh, as well, coffee, it'll last you forever. As the coffee geek told me, um, Mark, I can't remember his last name. It has the coffeegeek.com oh, site. He would rather oh, have paper cups? a cheap coffee maker or, and an expensive grinder than vice versa. The grinder is very important. He says. Now we used something that Steve doesn't recommend, but I, I think I don't know. I think it produces a pretty good cup of coffee, and this is the cone filter. And the nice thing about this is it, it is reusable. Yes. <clears throat> oh, we're about ready to go to Japan in just a, uh, just a few minutes. We're going to go. Uh, this is from Abel Brewing, which is uh, up north uh, in uh, in Seattle. Yeah, and this uh, cone filter is sixty dollars. This was a Kickstarter. It's a stainless steel reusable filter, um, and I think I think it's pretty good. Uh, and has one of the advantages of not, uh, uh, you know, being reusable, of not, uh, you know, having to buy new filters all the time. So uh, that's that's what we're using right now. And I actually am using a ceramic pot also from Abel Brewing. Um, but that obviously doesn't really matter. So we're going to give a little bit to our friends in the studio and get their unfiltered, uncensored impression. We're ready to go to Korea and Japan. I'm very excited about this. Let's start with uh, Korea. Hello, what's your name? Is, is somebody got the cap down? Other here? one. Oh, he can't hear me apparently. Oh, you can't hear me. Are you in Korea? Ask him any questions. I don't know people watching you right now. Yeah, exactly. All right, let's pick one. Maybe on this side, take a video. We're having a little trouble with audio here, so let's pick one. <laughs> Can you hear me? Yes, what's your name? My name is Koji. I'm in Japan. Hey, oh, you're in Japan. Okay. Yeah. We're going over to Japan first, then we'll go okay. to Korea on this side. Hello, it's good to see you. Happy hey, New Year. Here. Happy New Year, Leo, man. Big fan. For five years, I've been watching your show. Oh, that's so wonderful. Tell me a little bit about how Japan celebrates the New Year. First of all, is this a Western New Year, or does Japan celebrate this as its New Year? Well, it's kind of, it's more traditional. They go to, um, they watch TV. There's a big contest. There's a guy versus girl type of contest that goes on. And it's real family oriented. It's not really, uh, like in the States where you have, you know, the ballrooms and all that kind of right. stuff and the big, you know, confetti and all that kind of stuff. And, who, and who's with you right now? Well, I got some people from New Zealand. It's my big buddy right here. All right. It's like Hamish. Hey, so, Hamish. Um, I guess <laughs> Says hi. He can't hear you, but um, <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> and um, his twin sister um, is here also, and her husband, <laughs> Paulina, and um, um, Jason with their family. So we got a whole bunch of kids over here, and um, you know, I just yeah, they're um, 
I, I'm from Hawaii, by the way. I'm, I was born in Japan, but um, I was raised in Hawaii, so I got a lot of English friends, and uh, they're just here to celebrate. We have kind of like a mixed um, traditional Japanese. We got the sake going on over here. Oh. And, uh, yeah, we got some champagne and things, and we just celebrate it. Well, yeah. we're gonna we're gonna do a countdown with you. We're only about eight minutes away. Hey, eight minutes away. Stay there, and and then I'm gonna say hello to Korea as well. Who who's in Korea here? This is RJ. Hey, RJ, and uh, uh, you're an American, I think. Yes, I am. And what brings you to Korea? Uh, I'm in the army. Awesome. Well, thank you for your service, and thank you for uh, joining us. Uh, it's kind of it looks kind of quiet right now. Oh yeah, I'm just in my apartment. Everybody's gone to bed, huh? Yeah, my son's sleeping, and so is my wife. All right, all right. Are you enjoying it? Where in Korea are you? I'm in the city of Daegu. Daegu. And uh, you, uh, how long have you been there? I've been here for a year and a half. Uh huh. You're going to be here there longer, much longer? Or? I got six more months left, and then I uh, go to Texas. All right. How's the family uh, like Daegu? Uh, they like it. I mean, they're ready to go to Texas, I think. Yeah, I'm ready to go back to the States. <laughs> That's great. Well, you can do a quiet countdown. We don't want to wake up your wife or kid, uh, but we'll do a quiet countdown uh, with you. Uh, we're uh, now seven minutes away from uh, New Year. Seven minutes away. Seven minutes away from 2014 in both Japan and Korea. And uh, we'll be celebrating uh, with you guys in just a second. So hang in there. Be ready in a bit. We're going to get the balloon drop ready. I'm going to get my horn ready. And, uh, I got my and sake ready. Get your sake ready. They, you have champagne, too, but sake would be good. What, and uh, and we're gonna RJ. What are you gonna be uh, celebrating with? Do you have a hat? Anything? <laughs> Jack and Coke. <laughs> now I'm done. Definitely good good uh, choice there. That's great. So and I should mention this will be 7 a.m. our time here in Petaluma. So it's uh, a little early in the morning for us, but we're gonna continue all the way to 4 a.m. Petaluma time. You got a uh, long way to go. Got a long way to go. We're gonna go all the way around the world and celebrate New Year. Good luck, Do yeah. <laughs> you think I'm going to make it? I don't know. I think you'll make it. <laughs> uh, I have to say I'm having a lot of fun. We've got some great producers who've worked very hard to put together a full uh, 24 hours of entertainment. Uh, we've got Jeff Needles, who's in the back building the Tower Bridge. We've got uh, our Warhammer players out here. They're still battling away. Thanks to Karsten Bondi for uh, producing that segment. Uh, Tony Wang, uh, Karsten Bondi, Chad Johnson... And uh, Anthony Nielsen have all produced. We, what we did is we gave them each eight hours of the 24 hours, and they're competing. So at the end, we're going to have a vote who had the best eight hours of New Year's. And sitting right next to me, Steve Gibson in his lovely headgear, as as he's getting as he's getting ready to celebrate the New Year. What is, is there a traditional uh, Gibson New Year uh, celebration of any kind? No, uh, normally I just go to sleep. Yeah, like at nine. At about nine. Yeah, me yeah. too. <laughs> this is the latest I've been up in years. <laughs> um, well, the earliest. And the earliest. The yes. And and if uh, I do know that we have uh, hats uh, available, and if anybody in the studio audience, do they? First of all, did you try the coffee? It's good, isn't it? Do you find it smooth? Yeah. Yeah, they're nodding. I think they're enjoying the, that special Gibson brew. And now we will know uh, when we watch Security Now what I'm drinking. What 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 the leaded that's power, being powered with? <laughs> yes, what's in here? Do you, if you want to bring out the bagels, the locks, the capers, the cream cheese, that's all right. We could do that uh, as we get ready for uh, 2014 uh, in uh, Japan and Korea, much of Asia. We celebrated uh, our first uh, uh, ball drop uh, in Australia. Yep. We've kind of been working our way Boy, around. Great fireworks in Australia. Beautiful too. Sydney Harbour yeah. fireworks. Seven million dollar fireworks. That display. fire. That's that great. fire waterfall thing. Wow. Um, we're, we're people are asking us to cut to the Lego. Let us cut to the Lego <laughs> and see how the Tower Bridge. Wait a minute. What the heck? Uh, Jeff, you're obviously cocky. You feel that you'll be able to complete this in well under 24 hours. <laughs> Would you like a bagel? Oh no, you. This is this is like offering meat to a vegetarian. Steve, come on, a little carbohydrate. Not interested. Come my on. Friend, no. All right, I'll take I'll, it off. I'll take myself. the cream cheese though. Yeah. All right. Well, we got cream cheese. We got locks. Those are those are helpful. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I would like a poppy seed with some cream cheese, some lox, nice. some capers, some nice. red onions. Toasted, toasted. Toasted. toasted, please. Nice. Isn't that? Look at this. Thank you, uh, Debbie. 
Thank you, Glenn. We have the we have a the, a larger team in here. Wait a minute, what's going on in Warcraft? We've only got three minutes to New Year's Eve in Japan and Korea, but first I've got to see what's going on in Warcraft because it does it does feel as if something serious is happening over there. It, is one of the is one or the other about to vanquish? Uh, yeah, it's coming down close. There's not a lot left on the board. You can see the majority of all that on the side is all dead. Those are all dead soldiers. The uh, yes. Wow, RJ, don't listen to this part. Those are all, <laughs> that's the Space Marine. Oh, you don't care about Marines. The Space Marines and uh, then the bugs and the battle rages on. This is amazing. Warhammer 40K. Did you ever do Dungeons & Dragons, Steve? Never did. I missed that. That was not that generation. You know, we were Colossal Cave. Ah, <laughs> you are in a dark room. Yeah, yeah. And grooves are around. Yeah. Plug and hey, yes. Question? Look sure. Look north. Are you going to expand your business to international? Because if you are, I mean, are you, have you thought about You're that? You're hired. You're hired. <laughs> yeah, please. please. <laughs> I would love to. No, in fact, we are. We very much are. One of the reasons we hired Mike Elgin is because he is a world traveler, and we very much want to expand our focus. In fact, one of the reasons we're doing this is to really acknowledge the fact that more than a third of our audience now is outside of the United States. Right. And uh, a big yeah. Yeah, and we feel that it's very important that uh, it, it, we are living in a global village nowadays, and technology especially is a global enterprise. So at, you, you send me an email. You're hired. Thank you. <laughs> You'll Thank be our you. stringer in uh, Japan. Are, did you say you were in Tokyo? I'm in Osaka. Osaka. I'm in Osaka but I do, I do travel back and forth. That's Osaka fine. Osaka's Osaka. fine. Uh, yeah. What is Osaka known for? Osaka is known for um, comedy and um, good food. Comedy you know, and food, food, I'm food. there. Food. That works. All right. Please, come get, over and get a whole bunch of sake going. I'm, I'm going to send you a bottle of sake. <laughs> I love sake. Actually, I'm a kind of a Nagori fan because I like the unfiltered sweet. But I, but I also like a good dry sake. We have a very good sushi restaurant in town that does some awesome. nice sake flights, some good tasting, and I am a big fan. I love sake. Is it, cool. is it okay, Steve, to drink sake? Is that on the list? Oh, yeah. So alcohol, <laughs> even though it, it metabolizes sugar, does not... Um, it does not knock you out of ketosis, and, and that's and so, the key. And so, what happens is, while your liver is metabolizing the alcohol, it it stops metabolizing anything else. So, alcohol gets priority, but it but it it doesn't classify. It it, it, it doesn't count like a carbohydrate or a starch. There you go. There you go. We are we are 55 seconds away from 2014 in Tokyo, and in Korea. Everybody's getting very excited. RJ, you're going to have to compete. With Tokyo, which seems to have a large Osaka, contingent. Osaka. I'm sorry, Osaka, which has a large contingent. The balloon drop is ready. Well, are the kids going to... Oh, there we've got our Kiwis, our honorary Kiwis in the back. Yeah, we are we are 30 seconds away. Come on, RJ. RJ, you come on. you got to get in there. you got to get in there, everybody. You're gonna, wait a minute, let me get the bottle of champagne open here. Oh, my goodness. Hold on. We're going to see if I can put another hole in the roof up here. <clears throat> we have 15 seconds... On seconds. my mark now, 15 seconds, 10, coming up, here we go, ready, okay, we're going to start the count, 10, 9, Nine. Eight, 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 7, seven six, six, 5, four, 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 three, three, two, one. Happy New Year! Let's aim this carefully this time. <laughs> Holy cow! I'm wet! <laughs> wow! Happy New Year, everybody! Happy New Year! 2014 is here. Once again. It was, we're going to do this 27 times, ladies and gentlemen. Holy cow. And, and, and as we uh, celebrate each New Year, we bring another little sign up. And by the time this show is over, you won't even see me. I'll be surrounded Ho! Oh, and I smell like a winery already. Wow. Hey, thank you so much. Happy New Year, RJ. Happy, Happy New, New Year. Year All the best to you. Thanks for your service. Uh, we really appreciate what you're the sacrifice you and your family are making. Uh, and uh, we look forward to getting you back home in uh, Texas in six months. Happy New Year, RJ. Have a great 2014. Happy New Year too. And to Team Osaka, you right. guys rock. What kind of sake are you having? Japanese sake. Oh, Japanese. <laughs> the best kind. The yeah, best we'll kind. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was so great to talk to you, your family, your friends. 
Thank you Thank so you. much. And you will. Uh, you are now nominated our, our Osaka correspondent. Awesome. All awesome. right. Thank you, Thank you everybody. How do you, how do you say it? How do you say Happy New Year in, in Japanese? Akemashite omedetou. Akemashite omedetou. Akemashite omedetou. Something like that. Yes, you got it. All right. Thank you, everybody. See you guys later. Happy Thanks. 2014. Have a wonderful year. Oh, my goodness.